Hey everybody, Jonathan Matt Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to today's studio session. This will be number seven in the series, and they've been going so very well. People are loving Back to Basics. It's getting everybody's juices flowing and thinking about how they might take the technique to another level, and I've loved doing these. So, um, Today's studio session, is a, it's an interesting one. I've kind of thought back, because because I've been looking back in the past at some of my old tutorials, I've also been thinking, you know, what am I, as, as a, a furniture artist, what am I very well known for, and a teacher now, obviously you know that I teach, um, what am I well known for? And it's two things that I think that people remember me for. And one of them is, um, faded grandeur techniques so that's probably a style that sits very hello everybody I can see you coming on um, that sits very well with me that's kind of my style although you know that I will give any style a go and I suppose that's probably what I'm quite well known for um, giving lots of different styles a go but faded grandeur is probably my thing and the other thing is using any slam chalk paint so the two things together and they do lend themselves really well to be uh, that sort of style works really well with Annie's paint so I thought if I can amalgamate the two things today and we talk about faded grandeur techniques uh, not techniques sorry color ways and I think that would be a good thing today to talk about and give you some interesting color combinations that I've used and that some of them I won't have used and we'll mix them together and see what we get. So just going back to Annie Sloan and my journey with chalk paint. So it was 2017 that I did my painter in residence with Annie. Um, it was amazing. Um, what an opportunity to work alongside Annie and her team to um, be able to um, create new looks, which funny enough, there was no brief with Annie. There was no brief. Um, but I knew that I needed to pack lots of colour into my projects and I wanted to, and I was already teaching slightly at that time and I wanted to grab lots of techniques. So I kind of amalgamated, it's a bit like my academy, amalgamated lots of styles into one to create a, a, un, a, 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 uni, a unique look um, which had never been seen before. So if you go back and find the work, you can go onto anniesloan.com and put my name in, you'll find my painter in residence works, which a lot of people think of me as faded grandeur, um, which I love, and that's probably why. But also these looks were very, like the circus cabinet, it was done, actually there's something on the wall here, which is a technique that I've never really shown. Let me just spin the camera. This uh, gold letter A was a little bit like my um, faded grandeur, uh, sorry, my circus cabinet it was about um using typography and lots of color and all of the techniques um laid on top of one another in there so it was kind of a bit mid-century modern a lot of my work that i did back then and obviously the leather look chair lots of people remember that but it was all about typography which is strange because i'm dyslexic and actually i'll let you into a little secret if you really look carefully at the circus cabinet there is a sign, there was a bit of signage on there that said tickets with a hand. I actually spelt that wrong and I had to paint over it again. I don't know if you'll really be able to see what the anomaly was on there, um, but I worked so hard on it and then Mr. M came in and said, is that supposed to say tickets? And, and I went, yes, and it was wrong. So I had to paint over it. It's still there underneath, it's hidden away underneath, but I've never told anybody that. So. Yeah, yes, I'm uber creative, um, but just not very good at the um, the spelling, and, and that's why I don't read all of your comments. You know that. I've said it hundreds of times before. So I can see you. I love you very much, but I get a bit nervous about reading. But don't, please don't not comment. Always comment because I do read them back afterwards in my own time, and I will respond to you. Anyway, let's get back to Faded Grandeur and some of those techniques. Um, not techniques, I keep on saying techniques, we're not sh showing any techniques today, you've seen lots of techniques in the build-up and all of the studio sessions, all of my faded grandeur techniques, you've seen, but they've all just been uh, de deconstructed as simple little bite sizes. But today we're going to talk about colour and using unlikely colours to make other shades. So let's head over to the overhead cam and see what we've got to play with. I've not pre-organised anything. I've just put a load of colours that I like on the table and then we're going to have a play around with mixing colours. So let's go and give it a go. 
Okay, guys, as usual, I'm just setting the camera up to get you a close up if we can. Um, what you're seeing on the table is uh, a load of any paint colours and um, a big sheet of white paper and brushes and a fuller chart. I'm going to list off, um, I'm going to reel off which colours I've got there. Um, I've got Annie Sloan, Florence, Versailles, Provence, um, Barcelona Orange, Rodmel, Antibes Green, Olive, Scandinavian Pink, Duck Egg, on Fleur, Antoinette, Old Violet, Paris Grey and Chateau Grey. Now, some of these you'd automatically just think, um, yeah, that's a faded grandeur sort of colour, which I've used in my online academy. I used um, Olive, Chateau Grey and Paris Grey because those colours to me are very... Um, French sort of chateau inspired sort of colours um, but also as you can see some of these colours on here that you would never imagine anything to do with um, faded grandeur you would probably um, put them in with the look that we were just talking about probably mid-century modern things like Antibes Green, um, Rodmel, Barcelona Orange, maybe Florence they're more contemporary colours so I'm going to show you that if you've got these in your kit and you haven't got um, another colour, you can mix a faded grandeur colour. Um, and we're going to do that right now. So you've heard me talk about it before and um, Annie will have talked about this many times, contrasting colours. And that's why I've picked out some of these strange colours. We're going to do a bit of um, mixing contrasting colours to create brand new neutrals. I am sorry about the noise. The kids are in the garden next door, so you might have to hear them playing in the garden. It's got all noisy all of a sudden. Since we've come out of lockdown, it's got much noisier. Anyway, um, onward and upwards. Um, we are going to look at the colour chart, and I'm going to hold this up to you so we can talk about compl um, complementary colours. Now, if you don't know about that, complementary colours is opposite of Annie's colour wheel. She's developed this pyramid-shaped colour wheel, and... If you take, let's just say, this is a complementary colour, one of the reds, so Empress Silk and Antibes Green would be a complementary colour. So the red and the green is complementary, they're opposite on the colour wheel, as is, let's just do one of the blues, Napoleonic Blue and Barcelona and Orange. We all know that those colours kind of work really well together. If you mix them together, you neutralize the shade and the tone, depending on the amount of each color that you pop into and the depth of color. So that's uh, quite complicated. Depth of color and tone, sorry, depth of tone is a whole nother thing, which is really difficult. I've tried before to explain it. It's quite difficult. Even I struggle with it sometimes. Um, so, but nevertheless, you're gonna see this happen in front of your eyes. So let's start somewhere, I know, let's start with Scandinavian pink. We'll start with the Scandinavian pink because I was very well known for a lovely um, bureau bookcase that was painted in Scandinavian pink when nobody was using the colour, well, there was plenty of people using the colour, but it wasn't too popular. And my response back from that project, way back, this was before Painter in Residence, we're talking about, 2015 probably people messaged me and said you've made me love pink all over again well i didn't make you love pink um annie developed the color and this is um down to her supreme choices of um pigment and color she knows color very well um and we all you know bow down to that and we actually um takes our time just to the knocking around next door i don't know what they're knocking at um, um, it takes us all a lot of time to try and get our heads around that. Anyway, without further ado, we're going to start with Scandinavian pink. People ask me about that colour a lot, so, uh, or that project a lot. And what happened with that project, I toned down the Scandinavian pink. So the Scandinavian pink wasn't true. And I did that by mixing its complementary colour, which was, I would say, Scandinavian pink here. Uh, opposite is somewhere to the greens. And I would have said, I would have, I think I toned it down with Chateau Grey. Um, and it did have a base coat of olive that sat 
underneath the distressing part of the technique. So that was peeking through as well as a lot of dark wood. Anyway, let's mix some colours. So I've got here olive and Scandinavian pink, and I'm just going to take one scoop of olive, but only one, into the bowl, put it there, and I'm, I'm going to do probably two of Scandinavian pink, because I want to retain the pinkiness of the tone. So, bring the bowl, one, maybe three. We'll do three, because I've probably got more olive. I'm going to mix those together, and this will kind of make a neutrally pink, more of a neutrally pink rather than a true pink, earthy. So that's one way you can change Scandinavian pink. Um, less or more of each tone, so we add one scoop of olive and two of Scandinavian pink. What we'll do is we'll take a brush, um, I'll take this brush and I'll paint Scandinavian pink here so you can see the difference in Scandinavian pink, if you can see that, is quite feisty. Let's take this out here. Right, let's mix this up. Now we're going to put the, the new mix, two parts Scandinavian pink, one part um, olive next to it and you can see the very different tones it's just cooled down that feistiness of that pink now I would probably that's kind of now when you look at that that's kind of quite candy pink against that color so that would be a color that I would most definitely use as a faded grandeur color maybe with olive underneath it so when you wet distress you're going to see a little bit of the olive coming through i know what they're banging about at next door they're putting a wendy house up how cute maybe i should offer to go and paint the the, the wendy house um they've got two gorgeous gorgeous little boys next door and somebody's brought them a wendy house so that's really cute right so that's one color mix we'll pop that there I'm going to make a big old mess on here. Right, let's go for something a little bit crazy. Right, let's do, shall we go for a, an unlikely colour mix? So we're going to go Provence and we're going to go Provence and Barcelona Orange. We'll go Provence and Barcelona Orange. What do we think? We'll probably do equal parts first and see what we get. So um, we'll go one one part Barcelona orange, which is a gorgeous colour, and we'll kind of keep it even, even Stevens, and there we are. So there's the two of them together. They will counteract each other. Oh gosh, this is a lovely colour. It's kind of really, oh, it's a lovely pistachio colour. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. Look, look how beautiful that is. So we've got a lovely, and it's neutral. It's, it's kind of a neutral colour. I think I'm going to put, I want to make it more of a, more yet to the yellowy side. So we're going to pop in a little bit more Barcelona orange. Only a little bit. That's about half a spoon. Mix that around a bit more. So we get more of a mustardy tone to it. Right, so now, somewhere on the colour chart, I would say I'm in the yellow zone. So if I want to further neutralise this, because we're kind of a bit yellowy, I'm going to pop a little bit of rodmel in here. Tiny, tiny little drop of rodmel, half a spoon. I'm going to pop that in. Like so. I'm flicking paint everywhere, but that's part of the fun. See if we can just kind of tone that down and make it a bit more neutral. A little bit more in. That's it. So 
So we're ending up with a very lovely, soft, gray green pistachio color. I'm gonna paint this on in a minute. Just mix that round. And these are unique colors. These are exist on the chart. That's beautiful, I love that color. So I'm just toning down each shade a little bit. Pop that there, we'll maybe put that one there. Okay, so here we go. Look at this as a gorgeous, this would make a beautiful, um, yeah, that's stunning. Oops, where's my line there? I think that would make a gorgeous faded grandeur color. In a minute, we'll flip to the other camera and you'll get a better view of the colors. Might even dry these off a little bit so you can see them in, in their true shade. That's it. Yeah, that is a stunning colour, absolutely stunning. So that's another shade. Right, what else have we got here? What could we do? I think another lovely shade is duck egg. I mean, duck egg, you could go straight with duck egg. It would be a perfect shade um, for a faded grandeur colour. And what I'm going to do with duck egg sounds a bit strange i'm not well it is opposite on the color wheel i'm going to neutralize this and make it a little bit warmer i'm going to add a bit of um on fleur to it only probably half we'll go half first so we've got one spoon to a half and it'll change the gray to another interesting um neutral So, a little bit French linen, but not like a colour that I've ever seen before. It is beautiful. So that's another way you can tone down a, a, a pale tone to make a lovely sort of shade. We'll pop that there, we'll get another brush. We'll give that. So that would be a colour that I would definitely use for a faded grandeur. It's kind of a bit Parisy grey because what it's done, some of the warmth of um, the Enfleur has knocked out some of the, the greeny tones and made it more grey. A lot of these colours will come out very grey in tone because you're counteracting them with the opposite side on the colour wheel. There we go. We'll do them in big big sections so you can see them and they'll dry pretty quick so we'll be able to have a good old scan over the colours at the end. So that's one neutral. Um, another, another. this is a classic for me um, and it's just toning down a shade. It's a gorgeous shade, underused, I love it. I absolutely love um, Old Violet. I'm gonna pop some Old Violet into a bowl now, Old Violet, if I bring it up to you, you can see it's quite bluey purple. And if you add equal parts um, Paris Grey, you can tone that down really easily. It just literally knocks that shade down, looks more faded. Now, I would use this mix, and I have done plenty of times before. Um, it's a little bit softer, and I would use it half and half with a, an old white um, colour wash over the top. So you've all seen how to do a colour wash and what colour it looks absolutely gorgeous with. And I'm just gonna pop a little bit on, on the board so they're next to each other. You can see how wonderful they complement each other. Again, complementary colours, let's bring the chart back. So there's Old Violet, we've neutralised it with a little bit of Paris Grey so it's not as feisty and dark. And the opposite of there is Versailles. Now, I could neutralise that colour with a bit of Versailles. We might try that in a moment, but I just want to paint first um, Versailles next to that because they complement each other. So if you're doing a faded grandeur technique, what would be really lovely is to paint the whole piece Versailles and then a, a, full, a full coat, any what way, so adding texture as you go along, and then this colour mix, um, Old Violet Paris Grey mixed together, again, any what way, and then a wet distress of Old White or even Paris Grey again to knock it back a little bit more. Because if you think about faded grandeur, we are 
What we're doing with faded grunge, we are kind of making it look like colours have faded away over time. I'm just going to add Versailles here so you can see a little, only a little bit, because you can, I want to show you how, it, how the two colours sit together and then we might add some to the paint. So this is my new colour mix. Those two colours look absolutely stunning together. And you can imagine that with a softer white wash over it, it knocks it back even further. So you'll end up with a lovely, um, sort of faded away with a colour wash. Um, but on its own, it can be quite feisty. So if I kind of give you an idea, can we clean this brush in here? Let's just put it solid colour underneath. Shouldn't do this, contaminate my paint cans. But just to show you here, now it's mixing together, it's not really going to show, but you can see probably it's a little bit darker. So with the Paris Grey, I'll take some of the Paris Grey here and kind of blend it away. Let's take some more Paris Grey. And then you can see, if I put more Paris Grey in it, you'll see the colour variant, how it can change and make such a lovely soft colour. But those together. Now, what we're going to do, pop this back in here, take this brush, this off. Spoon there. Now we'll put some Versailles into this colour and change it up again. So we'll do one spoon of Versailles straight into here, if I can get it from there. Can't get it up, that's it. It will change this colour probably quite a lot. So the Versailles is going in, so it's going to change it into more of a grey, and exactly what I expected it to do. So you can tone down your bright colours by choosing the opposite on the colour wheel. So there you go, another, another variant of that shade. All very beautiful tones together. All faded grounded tones. Even this, even though it looks fast, but you can imagine that's just too bright for a faded grounded look. Right, that's going there. Right, let's try and do something with two of the brightest colours. Um, it may need knocking back with something else, but let's grab another bowl and we'll go equal parts to begin with and see what we get. This is Antibes Green. It's kind of, for me, I don't use it very often. It's good as a, um, a farmhouse look, I think, or industrial. Um, I don't use it straight often as it is in, in the colour for my work, but right, rod mouth. These are opposite on the colour wheel as well. I'm going to put brush in there to mix this, keep them fresh. Right, let's see. There we go, the two colours together. Quite bright and feisty. Let's mix them together. Instantly sort of neutralises the green. It's still a green. Obviously the green's fighting out through there. We might put more rod melon into this. Can you see, it's still a green, but it's a neutral green now. It's kind of going a bit towards the olive side. So let's put a little bit more rod mallet in to knock some of the, only a little bit, so that's about one and a half parts to one part. And if we keep on mixing, you've gone from that feisty, feisty green to a very subdued, calm, neutral green, um, which is lovely. Once you've got them really well mixed, I'm gonna put a little bit more rodmel in it. Just a, maybe two parts rodmel, one part on teeths. Now, if you can't remember, if you like any of these shades, you'll have to watch it back. It's quite nice. I'm gonna paint it on to the paper and then we can see it a little bit better. And then we might add something else into it. So it has gone more to a neutral. Let's scrape some of that off. Right, where are we gonna go with this one? We'll go down here, we'll go right in here. So yeah, it's a lovely neutral shade. Gorgeous, subtle. It, to me, another faded grandeur. If you have this color, this shade, this beautiful shade with, let's say Paris gray over the top, as a wash, 
it's already, to, to me, these are all neutrals, the kind of soft neutrals with hints of colour in there. So, and that's kind of like, in a way, there's some sort of duck eggy shade in there to me. Um, it kind of, yeah, it feels like there's a, a, an element of duck egg in there. Let's throw a wild card in now. Let's put some Scandinavian pink. We know that it's kind of a bit olivey. Let's put some Scandinavian pink in and, and neutralize it a little bit more. One scoop of Scandinavian pink. And this is a good way of learning how to mix colours. Now, ordinarily, when I mix colours to test them out, I use my fingertips. So, on a smaller piece of paper, I dip my finger, one dip for each part. So, I would go one part olive, one part Scandinavian pink, mix the two together, I know what I've got then. So, that means you're not using up lots of paint like I am. I also might do, it sounds strange, but sometimes I do a paint dump. So if I've ever mixed lots of colours up, I put them all into one and, um, and get a lovely grey neutral somewhere along the way. And then I've got plenty enough paint for another product. So that's another way, which is similar to that. If you're just doing it with your fingertips, you're not using too much paint up. So that's another great way of mixing colour up. Right, so let's mix this, this, um, sort of olivey, duck eggy, strange colour with a bit more Scandinavian pink to neutralise it a little bit more. And what do we get? It's kind, you can see a little bit of the pink kicking out through there, but it's quite, um, yeah, it's quite an earthy colour. Again, it's kind of gone to the French linen-y sh shades. Um, let's pop this right next to the green so we can remember what it came from. Mix, mix, mix. Here we go. So yeah, now we've got another grey, a darker grey-green, which is definitely one of my shades. I love, if anyone knows me, I love green. Again, this would be a fabulous colour for a faded grandeur technique. And so where did we start with that? That started off as Rodmel. Um, I think it was, I think we ended up with, was it two parts Rodmel, maybe three parts Rodmel, one on Teeves Green, and one Scandinavian pink. So you can just see how far these colours change. What a shame, I've coloured over that. We'll colour back over that. You can paint over that. Because I will bring the camera lower in a minute and we can see it from another angle. Um, so that's another great shade. What else have we got to play with? Um, shall we go, right, so, Many of you will remember from my project, which was hauntingly beautiful. Now, I haven't got all of the shades here with me, but the main body of that piece was Antoinette, um, which is a great colour. It's a soft pink, but there was contour blending involved in this shade. So we're going to bring it over here. Contour blending is a technique that I do teach in the academy. Um, Oops, lost the colour chart. So this is a lovely colour. Let's pop this on here. Quite fresh. But I mixed this with... Now, I didn't mix it together. I mixed it on the piece. So that's what contour blending is. I mixed it with... Um, I haven't got it here. I mixed it with a meal and cocoa. And a little bit of uh, en fleur. So to do the contour blend. So I used a darker shade in there. So that's... As you can see there, it's quite feisty. So what we're gonna pop in, we'll probably put in a little bit of, if I can find a clean spoon, we'll put some on flare in it. Only a little bit, half, we'll go half. To change that up, just a little bit. It will kind of neutralize a little bit. It's in its shade. And so now we're getting a more Nude, I would say nude pink, which is a gorgeous shade. Let's look at that next to there. As you can see, a great, and it, again, it's quite close to cocoa in its shade, but it's a lovely, a lovely shade of nude. One colour, uh, one colour mix that I haven't got, which would be absolutely gorgeous, and I've done it before. It is two of probably my least favourite any colour colours, Lem Lem and um, Lem Lem and 
Henrietta, if you do that, mix them together, you get an awesome shade. So try it, um, let me know how you get on with that one. So all of these shades now are very, very neutral. Shall we go one more? What have we got to play with? Um, shall we go with, oh, some gorgeous colors. I kind of want to play around with Antibes Green again. I don't know why. Um, let's go, I think it's because it's such a feisty color in its own right. So we're gonna go Antibes Green, one part Antibes Green. See, greens are my shades, but we might load it up with Barcelona Orange. Let's do equal parts of them and see where we get with that. Uh, a little brush, a little brush. Um, Mr M's at the door, he's saying, do you want me to close the door? And I said, no, because the light's rubbish and I don't mind the banging next door. It's life, isn't it? Next door, you know that you can, you can tell that these lives are actually live. Um, I don't mind a bit of banging. No. Okay. <laughs> it's nice to hear. Oh, that's beautiful. I actually really love this shade. What have I just done? So that was Barcelona Orange and um, I wouldn't say this was too much of a faded grandeur colour, but we'll change it into one. So that was Barcelona Orange, equal parts of Antibes Green, Barcelona Orange, and look at that colour. It's like a mushy pea, mm, maybe Chartouse. Chartouse is the shade. I'm gonna pop it over here next to the other green. So it's similar to this. I love that shade, that's a great shade. Right, how to neutralize um, a color like this. So on the color wheel opposite, if we put a pink in again, um, why don't we just go, why don't we soften it with Antoinette and see where we go. It's a very subtle pink. It will make it paler and we'll put two parts Antoinette into that and see if we can get a soft pale green. So one, two. And see what we get when we mix all of them. So we've got Barcelona Orange, Antibes Green, equal parts, and now we've got um, two parts Antoinette mixed together. It's not massive, it's just paled the shade down. There's not enough pigment in Antoinette, but it's nevertheless, it's still a nice shade. Let's put something with more pigment in. We'll go Rob Mel. I mean, I don't normally go up to four shades when I'm mixing. But in this case, it wasn't enough. So this is where it changed. So now we're gonna get a lovely warm. It's gone beyond green to another neutral, a lovely gorgeous neutral. So all of these neutrals just made from some of the brights. You do, who needs to have all the shades in the color palette? palette and you can make any that you want. So I'm going to pop this next to each other. So that's with Antoinette and Rodmel. Again, a little bit French linen-y, but you can see it's a dynamic colour. I can see bits of green in there, um, green and pink, gorgeous shades together. So as you can see, so many colours, so many different colours. I'm going to bring, flip the camera and show you some of these colours. Let's just paint this again. I've gone over, it's a shame to lose the true colour, so I'm going to paint over that. Mix that in. Yeah, I don't know which one my favourite is. Let's flip you around. So here we have it. This is the end results of all of the colours. Um, there's a few here that I'm most definitely going to try out. I absolutely love this sort of... Um, this uh, sort of chartreuse green, uh, mushy pea colour. Like I said before, it's probably not a faded grandeur colour, but who knows? You can make any of these colours work for you in whatever way you want. And the Scandinavian pink, you can see just how different by neutralising what, what shades you can get, earthier tones. Definitely my prediction for interiors over the next couple of years, we're gonna see lots of more earthy, warm tones. So everything from perhaps this shade through to the terracottas really, um, really warm shades, mixed, com com combined with probably 
earthy greens like this one. Although it looks a bit French linen-y from where you are, it's got a lot of green in there. As you know, because you've just seen me mixed it, it has lots of Antibes green in there. So I'm hoping that you got something from that. Be brave with your colour mixing. Like I said, don't, you don't have to use all of this paint to do it. Use your fingertips to get your ratios. You've got um, three big fingers to go with and you can do one part, two part, three parts of all three different colours and then wipe your fingers and mix together. Um, it's much easier, less paint, and then it gives you your ratio. So each fingertip is one part of the ratio. And then when you come to mix it in a larger quantity, use a plastic cup to make your quantities up and you'll be well away with your colour mixing. So let me know how you get on. If you use any of these um, combinations, I really love that one. There isn't a bad one there really. Uh, and there never is when you're mixing Annie's paint. So um, yeah, give it a go. And if you use another paint brands, I'm pretty sure that you will get great results from mixing paint colours together. Use the same principles and give it a go. See what you can come up with. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to see you all soon. Take care until next time. Um, I am back at work, so um, studio sessions might slow down. But if there is anything people would like to see, don't hesitate to give me a private message and say, can we do that? Remember, keeping it simple. Um, and we will, um, I'll, I will roll out another one. So take care everyone, see you soon.